let's dive into implementing an update operation for our products and learn how to pass additional arguments to a server action. In VS Code, we will begin by creating a route to edit product details. Under app slash products DB, create a new dynamic route. Within square brackets, id slash page.tsx. Go ahead and copy the code from products db create page.tsx and paste it in this new route. Rename the component to edit product page. In the browser, navigate to products db slash one and we see our form to update product details. Now we need to fetch the existing product data corresponding to ID one to populate this form. For that, we will extract the route parameter ID and fetch the corresponding product from the database. So destructure params, which is of type promise, object, ID of type string. Within the component, destructure ID from params. So const ID is equal to await params. And then we will use the get product method from Prisma DB, which returns a single product given its ID. Const product is equal to await get product and we pass in parse end id now here is where we encounter our first challenge we cannot use the await keyword as client components can't be async components if i add the async keyword you can see the warning and we can't remove use client either since we're using react hooks in the component this is actually a common issue you'll come across in nextjs to solve this we will split our logic in the same ID folder, create a new file, product-edit-form.tsx. Copy all the code from page.tsx, but leave out the data fetching part. So remove get product, await params, and the props. Let's call this edit product form component. Then in page.tsx, we will focus only on the data fetching part. So remove the use client directive at the top, use action state from React, the invocation of use action state, and for the JSX, we return our newly created edit product form component. We can also remove form state and create product, as well as initial state from the component. We can add async as we don't have any hooks anymore, pass product as a prop to the form component. So what we are doing here is extracting the route params, getting hold of the ID, getting the product corresponding to the ID, and passing the details of that product as props to edit product form. In the edit product form client component, specify the prop product. And for the type, we're going to go to our products listing page in products db, export type product, and import it here. And make sure to use at slash app slash products db. Now use the product details as default values for all the form fields. So for title, default value is equal to product.title. Similarly, for price, default value is equal to product.price. And for description, default value is equal to product description. Since description could be null, we use the nullish coalescing operator to provide an empty string as the default value. So double question mark, empty string. If we go back to our edit product page, we still have a TypeScript error. First, let's import the product type. I'm going to copy this line, paste it here, and specify the type of the product variable. Now get product could return null if the product is not found, so we need to also handle that case. If the product is not found, we call the not found function from next slash navigation. Make sure to import it at the top. TypeScript is now happy. Back in products DB listing page, wrap the product title with a link component to enable navigation to the edit page. So link component, which we import from next slash link, wrap the product title, Specify href is equal to backticks slash products hyphen db slash id. And that is dollar curly braces product dot id. In the browser, 
clicking a product title, so product one, takes us to the edit page pre-populated with product details. Product one, price 500, description one. Our UI setup is now complete. Let's move on to implementing the update server action for form submission. In products.ts within the actions folder, duplicate the create product server action and name it edit product. In product edit form.tsx, we will import edit product server action instead of create product and pass it in as the argument to use action state. Also, back in edit product, server action will modify it to call update product from Prisma db.ts, which updates the product in the database. But we now face another interesting challenge. Update product needs the product ID, which means we need the product ID in our edit product server action. Since product ID is not a form field, we can't access it from form data like our other fields. Now we could use a hidden input field. So input type is equal to hidden, name is equal to ID, value is equal to product.id. But this would expose the ID in the HTML without proper encoding. Instead, let's use JavaScript's bind method to pass additional arguments. In the edit product form component, we can bind the ID to the edit product server action. So const edit product with ID is equal to edit product dot bind null comma product ID. And then pass this function into use action state. The bound argument ID will now be available as the first argument in the edit product server action. So ID of type number, comma, previous state of type form state, form data of type form data. Pass this ID as a first argument to update product function. ID, comma, title, price, and description. Back in the browser, update the product details. So updated description one. Click on submit. And the changes will be immediately reflected in the products listing page. Our update server action is now complete. I understand that was a lot to take in, so let me summarize what we did. We created a dynamic route for updating individual products. We used route params to fetch product details from our database. We found out that client components can't be async components. To solve the async issue, we split data fetching into a server component and form logic into a client component. From the server component, we passed product details as a prop to the client component. In the client component, we bound product details as default values to our form fields. In our actions product.ts file, we created a new server action to handle product updates. The database function though required the product ID, which was not available in the form data. We used the bind method to pass the ID argument without exposing it in the HTML. We retrieved the ID as the first argument in our server action and passed it to the database function. We got our product update functionality working smoothly. Up next, we will tackle the final piece of our CRUD operations, the delete functionality. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.